Hello my fellow investors and welcome back to another wealth video. Today I would like to go over what I consider the levels of investing. This is adding on to step number four from my how to build wealth in 2023 video. So if you all want to get the full context make sure to go watch that one too. But the idea in step four in that video it is essentially how to start creating different types of cash flow. And since the one that I follow is using the stock market I would like to go over what I consider the levels of investing starting with level zero which is basically the most passive to the highest which is the more involved one as always this is not financial advice and this is my personal opinion some of you may disagree and some of you may think of more steps if so please let me know in the comment section below also by no means am i suggesting that the goal is to go to the highest level you should stop wherever you feel more comfortable at in fact i'm more comfortable in one of the middle levels myself so i do not plan on going beyond that point so with that said let's get started with level zero which it is index investing index investing guys for all of those of you who may not know when you buy into an index it is essentially like you're buying into a basket of companies for example we over here got the s p 500 index basically when you buy into this fund into this etf which is just an exchange traded fund which pretty much follows this index it's as if you're putting your money into all 500 different companies and with this you get a lot of security because at this point well you know longer have to worry if a company is going out of business or anything of the matter right because if a company does become less profitable and it just doesn't fit your criteria anymore at least doesn't fit the criteria of the index the index automatically kicks it out brings another one in and you pretty much just lose nothing for putting your money in here now obviously you do have still market volatility however when it comes to security in that sense that you don't have to worry about bankruptcy of any individual company your money is significantly more secure now s p 500 is only one of these index you also have ones like a really popular one now nowadays and that is schd which is schwab strategic trust and pretty much you could come over here and see all of their holdings now seeking alpha only shows the top 10 but you can clearly see that most of these companies are in all other indices as well like for example Merck Amgen Cisco Broadcom and even Home Depot you can pretty much find it as well in the S&P 500 but nonetheless putting your money into an index fund it is pretty much the most passive out of all of them because well you don't have to worry about any individual company for starters and number two they also pay out a dividend as well now the downside is is that you actually don't get a lot of growth when putting your money into indices because now you're taking the overall average movement of all the companies in there as opposed to one individual company that may have a massive upside of like 5% in a day but the index will probably only go up like 1% on that same day. So that's pretty much level zero. Now let's actually come over here to level one and what I consider to be a little bit more involved because now this is the step where you want to buy individual companies. Companies. However, you're not fully there at the level of analyzing a company's fundamentals. This is the level where you essentially just buy the companies that you buy the products for. For example, Apple, right? Most likely you're watching this video on an iPhone or an Android, but in this case, let's go with an iPhone just because Apple's a lot easier to invest than Samsung. But if you have an iPhone, you may want to invest into Apple. Also, other companies involve, like for example, Clorox. If you clean your bathroom or if you clean your kitchen you probably have a clorox product therefore you might consider in investing into clorox and even things like coca-cola as well if you drink coca-cola or maybe if you drink or eat some of their other subsidiary companies you might also consider them buying them as well now the one issue when it comes to this type of investing is that well now you're actually investing into one company therefore if the company were to go bankrupt or if any news comes in that is negative to the company you're going to get hit a lot more than if you were to do an index investing strategy however the upside it is significantly better because of what i just said lastly in level zero if a company has a massive massive upside on that one day the index may not move to that same level it'll move up but it won't move to that same level so that's where it essentially counterbalances and on top of that when it comes to these kinds of companies some of them pay a much much higher dividend for that matter so that really does accelerate your passive income as well as your cash flow into the future however at this point of the investing ladder you are not necessarily focused on 
what price to buy this companies at. You're just focused to buy the companies in the first place. You don't necessarily know or care what price they are at. You just mainly care, hey, I just want to buy this company because I own their products. So I may as well just buy it because I own their products. And now we're jumping into level two. Now level two, it is a little bit more involved because in this one, you are now starting to take a look at financial statements and also determining what is a good price to buy companies at. Remember in level zero, you were essentially buying ETFs. You didn't even care about the company. Level one, you were buying individual companies, but you didn't know if the price you're currently buying them at, it is a fair value or overvalued or undervalued. Now here in level two, you're going to analyze their financial statements, which essentially will tell you if the company is overvalued, undervalued, or at valued based on a discounted free cash flow approach, which it is essentially my whole basis of my channel. I got a plethora of videos, pretty much like 90% of the videos on my channel are looking at financial statements, the company's fundamentals, and determining whether or not the company is at a good value today based on discounted free cash flow, making assessments into the future on their revenue, as well as the projected share buyback using past data to make this determination. So there's three types of financial statements that you guys should definitely learn how to utilize. Starting with the balance sheet, it provides an overview of a company's assets, liabilities, and shareholders equity as a snapshot in time. Pretty much guys, it tells you the company's debts, the company's assets, and like the shares outstanding, that kind of stuff. It's really, really good, especially to know if a company's debts are higher than the assets or if they have like more cash on hand then they do debt etc 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 so this is a really really important part of their financial statement next we got the income statement which is actually one of the first ones that people tend to look at specifically the revenue in the income statement but the income statement according to investopedia unlike the balance sheet the income statement covers a range of time which is a year of annual financial statements and a quarter for quarterly financial statements the income statement is provided provides overview of revenues, net incomes, and earnings per share. So this is one of the ones that people usually tend to see first because I mean, when a company has earnings, well, this is essentially what people tend to see first, right? They see they see like their EPS, their earnings per share, as well as revenues, right? This is like one of the main ones that people tend to look at. And now the last out of the financial statements, we got the cash flow statement. Pretty much it measures how well a company generates cash to pay its debt obligation, funds operating expenses, and and fund investments. Cash flow statements complement the balance sheet and income statement. Also, this is the one where we get the cash operations as well as the capital expenditures. And basically, if you subtract those two or add because capital expenditures are negative, we get the cash flow, the king of everything. Cash flows pretty much dominate the entirety of whether a company is worth investing now or not. So that's pretty much all of the financial statements that you guys should definitely take a look at. And once you analyze and understand these financial statements, guys, you can also use my discounted free cash flow calculator, which I have available for free in order to tell you whether or not the company is at a good price to buy it at today. I promote this in every single one of my stock analysis and even earnings videos. So I want to promote it here one more time because it is available for free. I want you guys to make your own assumptions. All you got to do is follow the steps as to what to put in where in this specific page. It's pretty obvious. I mean, you got the net income, cash from operations, and the revenue, the total assets and total liabilities, etc. And then once you do that, you can come here, make your own assumptions as to what do you think this company will do in the future based on revenue growth and a projected share buyback and a required rate of return, which you can change this for yourselves as well as change the margins of safety. And then this will tell you what price you should pay for this company today. If the current share price is lower than the numbers that you guys are getting here, it's telling you that the company is undervalued based off of your assumptions. If it is higher, then you're overvalued and you should probably wait until the company falls down. Now, this isn't the end all be all to tell you whether or not the company is at fair value. It really just depends what you believe. And it also depends as to what kind of premium you would like to pay. Because let's say that if a company is at around like $10 above what your numbers are saying here, but you don't mind paying that $10 premium, then you might consider buying it because for all you know, that the following day, it could jump up and you probably 
probably missed your chance to buy at the great valuation. So it really is just up to what you guys feel, but this does serve as a pretty good basis to start with value investing. And now jumping into level number three, and this is the one that I recently just started. And me personally, I actually like staying at this level. I'm probably not going to go to the final level, level four, mainly because I just don't really see the point in it. But level three, guys, it is call and put options. Now, this could be a little bit overwhelming and there is a lot of risk when it comes to doing this. However, if you can understand it and if your risk tolerance allows it, this is actually a pretty good way to increase the cash flow, especially from step number two. And the explanations for what a call and a put options are is a little bit complicated, especially if you've never done it before. However, the one that I actually started doing right now is something a little bit more safe and that is selling cash security puts i'm not gonna go over the other ones but basically a cash secured put is basically you selling somebody the contract to force you to buy 100 shares of a certain company at a specific strike price at a later date if the share price of the company falls to or below that strike price that you said by that date the contract executes and you are forced to then buy 100 shares of that company the reason why it's called a cash secured put is because you have the money to pay for it cash secured puts is one of the safest ways that you could actually do options because if you implement it with level number two and you know the price that you're willing to buy this company at then you're not really that worried of buying that company at that strike that you said if the contract does execute right because you wanted to buy it at that price because you did your fundamental analysis you did your discount and free cash flow in order to tell you hey i want to buy this company at this price so the fact that you are selling a cash secured put and that you are going to be obligated to buy those 100 shares at that price which you want to buy it anyways is not something that should be looked at negatively and on top of that when you manage to sell this cash secured put you actually do get paid a premium of like anywhere between 20 cents per share all the way up to like several hundred dollars depending on what the limit order is at the time for that specific contract and if you guys have followed my other videos you guys probably know that i have sold around three cash secured put contracts already on my channel channel now one of them i had to buy the clothes because i got really scared that was the first time i ever done it but i have sold two more realty income which i have shown on my channel and another one that I actually just sold recently and that is a google put for 77 dollars strike by march 17th and i got paid for that guys 225 dollars now you see 224 because charles schwab takes 65 cents as commission but essentially i got paid 225 dollars for this contract and i personally am comfortable with buying google at a strike price of 77 dollars i personally don't think it'll get to that point but if it does i'm more than happy to pay the seven thousand seven hundred dollars in order to buy these 100 shares and if the contract does execute my goal is to then turn around and do a covered call when it comes to these 100 shares of google and making money on that difference that i paid for this 100 shares of google to begin with and now for the last level this one isn't really much of a level but i'm still gonna count it as that because it is the same as level three it involves options however guys there's a lot of option strategies and when i mean by a lot i mean a lot the ones that i just covered in level three are like the two basic ones right cash secured puts covered calls that's it but you also have a bunch of other strategies that like limit your risk that like enhances like your gains it's crazy out there i personally do not like these I just think that it just gets way too complicated and I'm personally fine with just doing cash secure puts and covered calls, at least for my personal risk management. But if you guys are interested, here are a couple advanced option strategies that apparently minimize your risk overall. And by the way, I have no idea what most of these are. I have never bothered to take a look at them. If you guys want to do your own due diligence, of course, but we got things like long call butterfly spreads. We got the iron condor. I actually do know that one. We also got iron butterfly the long strangle etc 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 so there's a lot of option strategies that you could utilize at level four but in my personal opinion i'm comfortable with just being at level three and be done with it if you guys would like to go into the last level at least what i consider the last level then by all means you know do so obviously please do your own due diligence because you could royally mess this up and then you're pretty much like 
in real deep trouble. So please do your own due diligence if you choose to pretty much do any of these levels, right? There's always risk when it comes to investing. However, this one, this last one is the one I have least experience with and I don't want to have any experience with it. So if you guys want to, make sure you do your own due, due diligence before you start doing these strategies. And that pretty much does it for the four levels, including level zero, of investing in the stock market. Now, obviously, as I said, this is my personal opinion. Some of you guys may disagree. Uh, some of you guys might think that there might be more. I personally don't know, right, if there are any more. But from what I've gathered in my years of experience when it comes to investing, which, let's face it, isn't a lot. I've only been investing for about five years or so. These are the ones that I think pretty much cover everything right and again you guys don't have to go all the way to level four i'm perfectly fine with level three if you guys are perfectly fine with level zero just index investing because you just don't like looking at financial statements then that's great too that's not a problem but at least now you have the knowledge as to what the other levels are and if you would like to learn about them well now you at least know those levels and you can just look up the resources for yourselves that pretty much does it for this video everybody liked if you like comment subscribe it really does help here with the algorithm on youtube you guys can follow me on my new tech sites link in the description below i would also like to ask if you guys could check out my second channel because i don't have any sponsorships and i don't think i ever will however i would like to promote my second channel because i recently just overhauled it to something completely different it was originally a gaming channel however right now i changed it to music videos because it's actually what i am enjoying more to do than gaming and i have three music videos in there and I would really like it if you guys were to check them out. And uh, if you like it, you know, uh, sub subscribe to that channel as well. It, it really does help. It's more just like a hobby. It's not really for like changing anything here on the main channel. This will always be my main channel. That was more like a hobby. I always wanted to do music. And I think that the music videos that I've made so far, they're pretty decent in my personal opinion. So if you guys could do me a favor, check those out. Leave a like, comment. And if you like them, uh, you guys can sub subscribe for more to come in the future. So with that said, peace out, and I will see you all in the next video.